Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite tropes of all time and that is the language barrier trope. Baby, baby. So if you don't know what this trope is, oh I adore it. Basically, the two love interests do not speak the same language at all and so they cannot communicate with one another but they end up falling in love with one another, another, <laughs> another, despite the language barrier between them. In all but one of these books, the couple ends up actually in the book probably towards the middle and the end start to actually understand and communicate with one another it's like the beginning part where they first are falling in love with with one another they don't speak the same language and i don't know why but i am a total sucker for it i think it's because this trope is very common in fantasy romances and alien romances and i'm a sucker for those kinds of romances so let's dive right on into these recommendations so half of this recommendation list comes from ruby dixon <laughs> Um, you know, I love my girl Ruby Dixon. I adore her. I love her. I recommend her all the time. If you didn't know, Ruby Dixon writes a lot of alien romances. The ones I'm going to be talking about today are only her, um, Ice Planet Barbarians and Ice Home series. She does have a Dragon Shifter series. I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but very briefly, she does have a Dragon Shifter series. When the heroine and the hero first meet, they cannot communicate because the Dragon Shifters only communicate through, like, telepathy, through mind like talking with their minds so they don't verbally speak and so they don't understand each other and they're not able to communicate unless the dragon shifter gives the heroine his fires like and does he bites her and that's when they become mates and so at the beginning of almost all of these books in the dragon shifter series they cannot communicate with one another at the beginning of the book but just forewarning there is that whole series as well that has this trope in there so let's start off with of course the original Ice Planet Barbarians. Um, if you didn't know, this is a alien romance series where human women crash on an ice planet. These alien, blue alien creatures who are low in the female population end up rescuing them, finding them, and they end up becoming mates with each of the women. Um, so this one is about Georgie and Vectal. Georgie is the kind of like leader of all the women, trying to keep them all safe. She goes out into the wilderness to try and find something to help them. And she comes across Vectal, a blue alien with horns and a tail who, claims that she is his mate. But at the beginning, of course, they do not communicate with one another at all. They try to, but they do not understand one another at all. Um, it's not until like a few of these books, unless they get like a, a language chip put in their head until they actually like understand what's going on. So this is definitely the original here. Another one that I love that is a fan favorite of that series is book four in the Ice Planet Barbarian series, which is Barbarian Mine. The heroine in here, she gets kidnapped by a alien that's on the planet that is not with the actual tribe um and so they're not able to communicate at all he has never had a conversation with basically anybody before he doesn't even speak the i don't think he even speaks the sakui alien language because he is has been by himself his entire life on this planet you get to see how they start to f slowly communicate with one another um and they have little words and phrases and even to this day like later on in the series book like 2018 like he still cannot fully talk in full sentences in any language because he didn't grow up that way um so he's still even to this day in like present time books being released he still has a hard time communicating with some people other than his mate harlow in here okay this is the first book a part of the ice home series this is lawrence barbarian in this book we have new women crashing on this planet on the planet there's actually like a island that people don't know about that is actually a tropical island she and another human woman end up getting stranded on that island and the hero ends up rescuing her and claims that as his mate but again they can't communicate with one another because neither of them have translating chips in their head this one was super fun as well again also for all of the ice home ice planet barbarian series you need to read them in publication order do not start with this book do not start with this book you got to start with this book and you got to read them all in publication order okay i have a guide to the ice planet barbarian series video down below if you want to know any of the reading orders to read them in i feel like you could either read this series all at once and then move on to this series or my recommendation is to read them in tandem publication order way so you flip flop throughout the series past a certain number in this book um so if you want to know what order to read these books in i recommend watching my guide to ice planet barbarian series video down below another book in the ice home series is willa's beast this is another human woman who crashed with uh, a part of Lauren's group, crashed on the ice planet, and then um, as well as other aliens from other planets. And so this is Gren, who is part Praxian, who is an alien you read about in a different 
Ruby Dixon series. <laughs> he used to be a gladiator and so the aliens kind of like fear him because he's big and mean and he's trying to like protect himself because he doesn't know what's going on because he doesn't understand because he doesn't have a translating chip. But then Willa is one of the human women. She doesn't like how the other aliens are treating him. So she lets him loose and they run off together into the wilderness um, and they try to survive with one another. But they don't speak the same language at all. They maybe know how to communicate through one couple words. But this was just super fun. I love this one. Okay, the last Ruby Dixon book I'm gonna talk about really quickly because I know y'all are sick of me talking about Ruby Dixon, okay? We have one of my favorites in the series. I just got this copy in physical form. We have Barbarian's Touch. Oh my gosh, I love this one. Okay, this one is just super interesting because yes, it's like these books where they're not able to communicate. However, he has a translating chip so he can understand human English because that's the language they wanna translate it into their chip. However, our heroine in here, what's her name? I think it's Lila, 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 um, she is deaf and so she only communicates through ASL and so he doesn't have an ASL language like programmed into his chip so he doesn't understand her and so I don't want to spoil too much about the series but anyway Lila and her sister end up getting wake up w woken up in cryo sleep this on this planet and one of the aliens who's not the hero ends up kidnapping Lila in hopes of like if they spend alone time together in the wilderness uh they will become mates um but then Rokan who is the hero of this learns about this and is like I think I have a connection with her. I'm gonna go save this woman. She, he goes and saves her. Lila is scared out of her mind because she does not understand this hero. The hero's trying to talk to her in English and she's like, I don't understand you. I can't, like, she's like, she can't understand him at all. Oh my gosh, he is so cute. Uh, he starts to learn ASL for her. It's just so cute. I love this. Uh, this one is one of my favorites in the series. As you can tell, if you watch my Guide to Ruby Dixon video, I also rank my favorites in both of these series that I love. Okay, let's move on to the other books that I have on this wonderful list. Um, first, we're going to talk about Love in the Wild by Emma Castle. This is a Tarzan retelling. So our hero in here, his name is Thorn. And he's our Tarzan character. Um, him and his family end up crashing in the jungle, I believe in a somewhere in Africa. I don't remember specifically. Their plane crashes and they're the only survivors of this plane crash. Um, but then like Thorne's a little baby and um, his parents end up getting killed by some raiders. Then Thorne is saved by a mama gorilla and he has spent his whole life being raised by gorillas in the jungle. It is years later, Thorne is now a grown up man who has had very itty bitty bitty little to none human contact. And our heroine in here, her name is Eden and I think she works for National Geographic or like, she's basically a photographer for a magazine, okay? And she's with her tour group trying to take pictures of the jungle. More raiders come and kill everybody a part of the tour group. And right before they're about to kill Eden, Thorn swoops in like Tarzan and saves her and takes her back to his treehouse. <laughs> right when he sees her, he claims that that is his mate. He's gonna keep her safe. He's gonna keep her and love her and cherish her. Um, and Eden doesn't know what the heck is going on. <laughs> Uh, they don't speak the same language. Thorne does not know English or any language besides how to talk to animals or how to communicate with animals. And so Eden slowly teaches him how to speak in English. It's a little bit too fast for my liking because I don't think anybody can learn English this fast as what it was in the book, but I kind of suspended my disbelief, you know? But I love a good Tarzan retelling and I feel like Tarzan was like one of the first times I've ever seen a language barrier trope, you know, in like a movie at least when I was a kid. And I love that, so. Next, I have Demon from the Dark by Cressley Cole. Okay. This is book number nine, a part of the Immortals After Dark series, but this book is so worth it. I feel like this one and two other ones are like triple tied for my favorite in the series. I adore this book. <laughs> this is a paranormal romance between, I think it's a, a witch or a sorceress. No, it's a witch. And like a demon half-breed of something. I'm trying to remember. Their names are Malcolm and Caro. Caro's friend's daughter ends up getting kidnapped. And so the only way to release her and to like pay the man who kidnapped her, like to get her back. Um, she's been tasked to go to this land where Malcolm is, who is a very scary, big demon hybrid thing. I think he's a mix of vampire and demon, if I'm not mistaken, um, and to take him back to where those evil guys are. And so Caro goes to this land um, to go and try and find him and bring him back to the place where she can rescue her best friend's daughter. Right when Malcolm sees Caro, he's like, she is mine, she is mine. But he doesn't speak English at all. I don't know if he speaks any language. He's basically been like tormented in this world for forever. And so it's been a very long time since he's conversed with anybody. And so he just, they don't understand each other at all. But man, 
are they super attracted to one another? Oh my gosh, this was hot. This was fun, this was hot. Read the Immortals After Dark series specifically to get to this one because this one is just so good. This one is so good. <laughs> Next, I have Rescued by Her Alien Mate by Star Huntress and Ava York. This is of course another alien romance. I feel like this one is very similar to Ice Planet Barbarians and how the first book starts out. Um, our human women end up crash landing on this planet. The hero in here um, is I think the king of their alien country that they're in and he comes across the spaceship. The, before the human women crash they were in like translating chips were put in them because um, I think they were going to be sold off as human slaves. Um, but then the cra ship crashed and the evil guys who were on the ship died and the human women survived so the human women get saved some of them have translating chips in their head but the hero and all of his men don't know what's going on and like the women can understand them but the man the men the alien men cannot understand them at all and so the women are trying to like tell these aliens like hey you need to put this translating chip in your head so you can understand us and like they, they can't understand them. They take them back to their village or their kingdom to provide them like a home and space and to just help these women. Um, and the heroine in here, she is like kind of like the leader of the women. She is very attracted to the king who saved her. They have faded mates in this book. And so I think it's like eyes started to glow or something like that. Um, and he like realizes this is his mate. And so she tries so hard to communicate with him. I think she even like draws symbols and stuff for him to understand they need to go back to the ship so they can get a translating device in their head and so then they have to go all the way back and track all the way back to the ship and so it's kind of like an alien road trippy romance <laughs> again i really like this one it really reminded me of ice planet barbarian so if you're into that book you might like this one as well next i have ensnared by tiffany roberts <laughs> This is another alien romance and this hero looks a lot like a spider, doesn't he? Uh, this is an alien romance series where uh, I think there's three books in this series. I've only read book one. So Katon is the hero in this book. He's a alien creature that looks like a spider and this takes place on his planet. And so he lives in the jungle, a part of his planet. And he comes across a spaceship one day, not knowing what a spaceship is. And he ends up accidentally waking one of the women who's on the spaceship in cryosleep up. Her name is Ivy. And right when he sees her, he's like, hmm, I'm entranced by this creature. I'm gonna take her home to my nest and she's gonna be my new pet. <laughs> Little does he know that Ivy may or may not actually be his mate. And right when she wakes up, she tries, like she's super scared, obviously. He's he, an alien that looks like a spider. Um, but he is just so sweet and caring and would do anything for Ivy. He slowly starts to fall in love with her and realizes that this, well, before he falls in love with her, he realizes that this creature is actually a woman and she is intelligent and not like an animal pet. <laughs> Like she's an actual being, like a person. And yeah, they fall in love. They slowly start to like learn how to communicate with one another. It's very choppy and broken. And I feel like this was more realistic than the Love in the Wild one and how slow Katon was to learn how to speak English. Um, Ivy did try to speak his language as well, but she can't pronounce some of the things because she doesn't have some of the things a part of his mouth, whatever. He more so speaks English for her because he can speak English um, and she can't really speak his language. Anyway, I just love this and how they learn to talk to one another. This was really cute. Don't let the cover fool you. Don't let the spider fool you. I am petrified of spiders and this did not scare me at all. Next, I have No Getting Ogre You by M. L. Eliza. This is an ogre romance. <laughs> so our heroine in here, um, Jacqueline, she is like hiking along the Appalachian Trail. Appalachian Trail and she ends up falling one day into like this cavern. She like passes out because it was a far drop. She like hurts herself. She's injured. And so our hero in here, Krug, he's an ogre who lives in this cave that she's fallen into. And he's like, ooh, this, this little creature's pretty. I want to keep her. <laughs> and so he takes her and brings her to his like little lair. Um, and she wakes up. She's like, what is going on? She's a little freaked out. Obviously there's this ogre, big ogre over her, but he is the sweetest bean ever. <laughs> He's so cute and sweet. And then they're like, their their times together. Oh, I kind of want to reread it now just to read about those times. This was just fun, super sweet. The hero was super sweet, super caring. It's just a fun, short monster romance novella if you want to get into that. And lastly, I have Transcendence by Shay Savage. Now this is the one romance book on this list where the hero and the heroine are not able to communicate throughout the entire book. This is a time travel romance. So the hero in here is a caveman. His name is Ed and he comes across our heroine because she's stuck in one of his hunting traps and 
you can tell that she is from the future she's wearing jeans and a shirt and he does not understand all of her garb that she's wearing but she has time traveled from the future into the caveman period and right when he sees her he's like "Ooh." I found my mate. I'm gonna take her to my cave and she's gonna be mine and we're gonna have children together and we're gonna live an amazing life. Um, and this heroine just like scared. Her name's Beth. She's scared, petrified. She just wants to get home and he, this cave man will not understand her at all. There's a note at the beginning of this book that the author has written and that says like, Ed is a part of a time period where human brains have not been developed yet enough to understand language and so he will not understand her the entire part of this book like the entire book he maybe understands one or two words and that's it but it's really funny because beth is trying to talk to him and communicate with him and he's like will this woman stop moving her mouth like what is coming out of her mouth like this is so annoying will she stop talking like she he doesn't understand <laughs> why this woman's mouth keeps moving <laughs> um but he loves her he loves her he fully loves her will do anything for her will rip apart the world for her this is just uh this is so good you wouldn't think that a romance where two people are not able to communicate at all would work but it it totally does in this one so there you have it those are a lot of books that have the language barrier trope in them i am a total 100 percent sucker for this trope so if you have recommendations for me please 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 leave them down below because I want them and I need them. <laughs> Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to or if you don't want to write any of that. Leave me a text bubble emoji down below to let me know that you've made it this far. Uh, but anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.